if you were to build a platform as a service, how would you run your users' applications? Your first thought might be, well, containers, obviously. We don't do that. And this is why. Fly.io uses lightweight virtual machines instead of containers, and the short reason is because they provide better isolation. And I could just leave it at that, but let's be honest, that's pretty vague. To help you understand why we've chosen not to use containers, I want to break down three broad categories of isolation and illustrate what levels of security they actually provide, starting with option one, jail. Without putting your code in some kind of box like a container or a VM, how do you prevent that code from messing with other parts of the system? Well, truth is a command for changing the root directory of a given process. Truth says to your process, this is your home now. What's that thing over there? Don't worry about it. To be honest though, truth is kind of a crappy security boundary, all right? Truted processes can still interact with other processes on the system and there's no network isolation. So you may have put walls around your prisoner, but there's a lot of escape hatches. Now, what if you just restricted privileges for different parts of your program? Well, this is something called privilege separation or privsep, and this can be really helpful, although it does add some extra complexity. The main problem though, with all of these jailing techniques, which for the record, that's not a real term, is that they really only work for single tenant workloads. On a platform like Fly, we're running a lot of people's code. So this kind of stuff ain't gonna cut it. So what about option two, containers? Containers take advantage of kernel namespacing. Kind of how Truit enforces boundaries on the file system, namespacing puts similar blinders on things like process IDs, users, network interfaces, and more. Unfortunately, containers can be insecure because they share the same underlying kernel. So if you have 100 containers and one of them manages to exploit a bug in the kernel, all 100 containers are compromised. In reality, containers are rarely used without extra security measures. For example, you can implement mandatory access control, you can limit system calls, you can even break up root into a bunch of sub-privileges. But my friends, there is a trade-off. You can make containers super safe if you just don't let the applications they're running do anything. At some point, you'll have to hand over some privileges, and that exposes your system to security vulnerabilities in the kernel. So, what if there was a better option? Enter virtualization. As a quick refresher, containers run on an existing operating system via an engine like Docker. A virtual machine runs its own operating system on top of a hypervisor, which is basically a bridge between it and the underlying hardware. Because VMs get their own kernel, you don't have to worry about one compromising others like you would with containers. Now, containers are often favored because they're lightweight, but you can make VMs lightweight too, such as by using a hypervisor like Firecracker. And this is exactly what we do at Fly. Firecracker was developed by Amazon and is used by AWS Lambda and Fargate, right? These are products that need to be able to spin up user code within milliseconds. Really good for high density, multi-tenant situations. Most importantly though, Firecracker is very secure. First of all, these lightweight micro VMs don't include any unnecessary emulated devices, okay? They don't need USB. And the fewer emulated devices, the fewer things to attack. Similar to the security measures taken for containers, Firecracker also jails your VM with Truit and by dramatically limiting the system calls it can make. There's really no escaping the confines of your VM. Lastly, Firecracker is written in Rust, a language that's well known for having strong memory guarantees. And this is why we run your applications in Firecracker micro VMs or fly machines instead of containers because they have very strong security boundaries and they're still super snappy. These machines are super easy to scale and manage with our CLI or the machines API. We also have a beta Kubernetes offering, and I'll leave links to all of these in the description box below. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. It's fine. It's fine. I swear to God, if that thing... Did it just get darker? Why are you blinking at me? What do you need?